Paymon who? Mata Heyday. Paymon Mata Heyday. Who, who is he? Never paid taxes in 30 years. Bought the U.S. tax court and won. See, I believe our rights come from God, not from government. Hello to my truth and freedom loving friends. I am Paymon Motahede, the president of Freedom Law School, which I created in 1996. And for over 30 years, I have openly not filed and paid any income and paid all taxes and teaching Americans like you to be free of the deep state the crooks and criminals in Washington, D.C. before the word deep state became a word. In other presentations I've done, you see how the federal income tax only applies to citizens and residents of Washington, D.C. and federal workers and contractors who work in Washington, D.C. In this presentation, I will cover for you how this scam the deep state has duped and deceived the American people for over a hundred years since 1913, knowingly and deliberately. The truth was hidden in front of all of us in plain sight in the law books, but nobody looks at laws anymore. Folks, what I got here for you is the Internal Revenue Code. The federal tax laws, the Bible of the IRS that they are supposedly following and imposing taxes based upon what's in here, about 10,000 pages of tiny font minutia gobbledygook of confusion. Well, I'm going to show you basically these tax laws going back to 1913 when the modern day income tax started and show you that even your grandparents and your great grandparents did not have to file and pay any federal income taxes either if you are simply a citizen or resident of one of the great 50 United States. So let's go to my screen and you see right here the 1040 US individual income tax return this U.S. is a District of Columbia individual income tax return, not a 50 states individual. And previously, to give you an overview, I showed you from Title 26, the Internal Revenue Code, available at uscode.house.gov, the government's website, for free. That uscode.house.gov, you can type it in, it'll come up for yourself, uh, Section 7701 of Title 26. So, as we, as you know, in definitions in chapter 79, it tells you that when used in this title, again, that title is title 26, the internal revenue code that they're referring to you. And you go down and define the term state and United States. And neither of these terms include anything beyond the district of Columbia, okay? So United States in tax law, the U.S. individual, that got to pay income tax and tax law is a citizen and resident of D.C., District of Columbia, not you, the people of the 50 states. I covered also previously how the U.S. Supreme Court is said in like Stenberg versus Carhartt in 2000 case and other cases besides that. When it comes to definitions, you have to follow these definitions that when a statute or law, legislation, includes an explicit definition like what you just saw, we must follow that definition even if it varies for that term or name meaning or the meaning of the term United States means the 50 states, united, but we cannot go by that. We have to go by what's exactly the lawmakers have written, okay? So here it is. They also add that it is axiomatic, self-evident, obvious, 
that the statutory definition or legal definition of the term excludes unstated meanings of that term. The term 50 states are not here in the United States or states, so the 50 states are excluded. They're not here because none of the 50 states are listed in here. Also, we covered in other videos how Supreme Court in Stanton versus Balti Mining Company in 1916, okay, told us that the 16th Amendment conferred no new power of taxation to the federal government, okay? This is based upon the Bruce Schaber case that came before to that. So, 16th Amendment did that do anything? And we know that the direct tax limitation income tax still apply to tax you directly that must do it the same way it was done way back in 1798 in this act that you see as an example of that it was done in the early 1800s and this video on that is called how income tax was established in the U.S. despite the 16th amendment okay so you want to watch those videos if you want to know more about those topics we're going to go now to 1913 that's right the very first federal income tax the modern law after the the so-called ratification of the 16th amendment it wasn't ratified but doesn't matter it's irrelevant anyways so let's look at this as you see here it's a 1913 law on top right okay and then it's a uh, uh act for all kind of taxes and it says that every this tax is for every citizen of the United States. Income from all sources. And then it also mentions that it's on a net income from all property owned and of every business, trade, or profession carried on in the United States by persons residing elsewhere. And a tax rate. So the, the key term, of course, is United States. We have to come back to that term United States a lot. In this presentation, I'll cover that and I'll also cover the term trade or business later on, also. Okay. So, you notice the tax rate, it was anywhere from 1% to 6%. You have to make over $20,000, okay, to pay 1%, which in today's money is over $2 million. Yeah. You made below $2 million, you paid zero even though you were a D.C. or U.S. territory citizen at the time. <clears throat> now, the 6% tax, the highest rate, applied to somebody who made over $500,000, over $50 million on today's money. See, what they did, they got the tax in there, got the court to say that, you know, it seems to be constitutional, and the tax rate was low. Well, over the decades, though, slowly to raise the tax rate and more and more people gradually believing they're going to pay income taxes, they did. And then later on, by after World War II, most everybody thought, oh yeah, we got to pay income tax. And everybody just went along with the program of becoming total slaves of the federal government, who has, which has become the enemy of you, the American people, which is enslaving and destroying you. So let's get back now to this 1913 law. And you see 1916. <clears throat> um, okay, here we go. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Back to 1913 law. We're going to go down now to definition of the term United States and state here. Here we go. That's the key part. Look at that definition, folks that the word state or United States, when used in this section, shall be construed to include any territory, Alaska, the state of Colombia, Puerto Rico, and the Philippine Islands, when such construction is necessary to carry out its provisions. Folks, that's very clear. That's very clear. State the United States do not include any of the Union states. There was 48 back then. Alaska, Hawaii were territories back then. 
and look at all these territories. They'll list them specifically, and they also add any territory of the United States. It was meant to be a tax on where the federal government is sovereign. They were given D.C. and its property lands and dockyards or the lands to protect the states from England on outsiders who want to attack us. They said, you can do whatever you want, federal government, in your little piece of land that you got. And this whole thing, the Internal Revenue Code, folks, is written for primarily D.C. and or its territories. Back in 13, that's all there was in the federal tax laws. Over the decades, I will show you, the territories came out, and then they all is left is D.C. now. Let's go through that process. Of, I'll show it to you quickly. You can always, folks, by the way, freeze these, uh, or go rewind, freeze these screenshots, and go back and read them slowly in more detail, because I'm going to go over them quickly to go through every single one of these acts from 1913 till 1960. Okay? So here we go. 1916, uh, income tax law. Okay, here it is. Again, it says income tax from all sources by every individual, a citizen, or resident of the United States. A tax of 2% of them. Okay, from all sources within the United States by every individual or a non resident alien. Again, the United States is at this time. What? Well, it was US and territories. And here we are, in 1916, the definition is this, that the word state or United States, when using this title, shall be construed to include any territory, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the Philippine Islands, when such construction is necessary to carry out its provisions. So, nothing really changed, but again, reaffirming, what the United States means specifically and state in tax laws. Here's a 1919 tax law, okay? And here we have, again, general definitions when used in this act. Oh, look at that. The term United States, when used in a geographical sense, includes only the states, the territories of Alaska, and Hawaii, and the District of Columbia. The states, of course, hasn't changed. The states is the previous state that they had in there, okay? Uh, that hasn't changed. But the word United States is changed, okay? They took out, for example, the Philippines. They took out Puerto Rico, okay? That's all. But Alaska, Hawaii, or territories, they were still in there. Here is the next one. The 1921 Act, okay, Revenue Act of 1921. And here the term United States, when used in a geographical sense, includes only the states and the territories of Alaska, Hawaii, and the District of Columbia. Okay, again, the term states, the previous one carries forward because the state wasn't changed. It was left the same. But the United States changed. In practice, it made no difference. What it did do, it was deliberately written this way to confuse you to think, oh, the states are there. I'm a citizen of 150 states. They didn't tell you that since state was defined in 1913 and 16, hadn't changed, those definitions continue. And this is how it got the American people duped to believe, oh, the law applies to me, the people of states either, because there's no definition in there. So therefore, everybody knows, duh, states means the union states. At the time, there was 48 union states. Here we go to 1924 Act, Revenue Act. And the term United States, when used in a geographical sense, includes only the states, the territories of Alaska, Hawaii, and District of Columbia. Again, nothing changed in this act. The next one is a 1926 Revenue Act. And here, again, definition of United States does not change. Okay? They didn't much change In 20s and 30s, folks, they just did the same thing again and again. They didn't really change anything until later on you see 
after World War II, things start change, changing. So I'm going to go over these quickly because nothing really changes in these acts. Here is the 1928 a Revenue Act, and here in definition section, again, nothing has changed. Same definitions as before. Uh, territories of Alaska, Hawaii, and D.C. are United States. Here's the 1932 Act. Here we go again, Revenue Act of 1932. And here we go under definitions. You see that, again, nothing has changed here either. Okay? And here we got the 1934 Act. In 1934 Act, again, now they put definitions in Section 801 of the, uh, the, the, the laws. And definition of the term United States, again, hasn't changed, same as before. In 1936, uh, Revenue Act, they have definitions. And we go down, again, United States is D.C., Alaska, Hawaii territories. Next, 1938 Act. Okay. Even now, the definitions are on Section 901 of this Act. And United States and states here, again, we see that they have not changed or remain. <clears throat> uh, D.C., Alaska, and Hawaii. 1939 statutes at large. This is when they made the, the law, the Internal Revenue Code of 1939. They put them in this booklet format. It's just being a bunch of statues. They put them all in this one book. All Revenue Acts were consolidated into one in 1939 <coughs> statutes at large. So here we go. In this one, look at the definitions. In, in this, uh, it was in 3797 section, definitions, United States, okay? Again, same definition, uh, uh, Alaska, Hawaii territories, and D.C. But the word state, look at that. They include the territories and district of Columbia. Again, they clarified this stuff. They want to make sure that you know the term state is not the 50 states. The term state is the territories of the United States and D.C. So this time they told people clearly again, folks, don't think we're taxing you. We're telling you right there in the law, the 50 states people are left out of the United States and states. Then in 1954, okay, okay, again, the definitions continue. And what they do here, okay, well, United States, okay, includes all of the states, territories of Alaska, Hawaii, and D.C., and the term state, ter definition doesn't change either, includes all the territories, even Puerto Rico, America, Samoa, and Guam, and D.C., uh, they don't have to mention Alaska, Hawaii separately because they're all territories, right? So here we go. Let's go now to, from 1954 to 1959. In 1959, Section 701, okay, of the tax law of 1954, what they did, they amended it by taking out, striking out the territories of Alaska and Hawaii and instead adding in Inserting territory of Hawaii. So Hawaii had to be put back in when it took Alaska, Hawaii out because what happened there? At that time, folks, Alaska became a state. No longer could be taxed. No longer a territory. But Hawaii was still a territory of the United States. Let's continue now to the next law in 1960. It gets Interesting. In July 12, 1960, the Internal Revenue Laws. Here, <clears throat> they mentioned that they, uh, they, they took out, strike out, take out the word territory of Hawaii from section 7701A9 in defining the term United States. And also, 7701A10. They also took, uh, to strike out the territory of Alaska, Hawaii again from state definition also. And interestingly enough, look at this. These amendments or changes they just mentioned from A through J, including what you saw here, shall be effective 
as of August 21st, 1959. They backdated this law from 1960 to 1959. Why? Why would you backdate the law at all? You know, and, and why backdate to that very specific day? Ah, the answer is right here, folks. Because August 21st, 1959, Alaska became a state. No longer people lived in territory of Alaska, no longer subject to federal power. And here we go, folks. The proof. Hawaii became a state, well known fact, August 21st, 1959. So, even way back then, folks, they knew. They told you in the law books, read the books. You're responsible to know the law. They say, ignorance of the law, no excuse. <laughs> but we'll hide it in this gobbledygook of confusion. And guess what? We will not teach that to your accountant, your CPA, even your tax attorney. In law school, he'll never be taught these things. So he won't know when he will say, I'm going to go talk to my tax lawyer, see what he thinks. He's ignorant. He doesn't know this because he hasn't he hasn't taught. I've had attorneys tell me, Paymon, I've been a constitutional tax lawyer for a long time. And guess what? I never knew any of this stuff until you point them, them out to me. So, folks, now I'm gonna go to the definition of the word trade or business in just a second for you, okay? First of all, so I made it very clear. In the term of the code, folks, okay, United States and states are only DC, only DC citizens and residents got the file income tax. We're gonna go down now and talk about the term trade or business, which as you know, I've shown you, includes only performance of functions of a public office. No business, no commercial activity of any kind is listed, only people that do some kind of work for the federal government. And again, we have to go by these explicit definitions and nothing else is added in there. However, we just have research for you and found this out that you go and love, okay? In 1938, okay, Congress passed the tax law, remember? And remember 1938 tax law, okay? United States and state at that time meant, look at this, the states, which was the, which was, as you know, the, uh, the uh, all the territories of the United States, territories of Alaska, Hawaii, and D.C. So at that time, U.S. territories, all of them, were taxable, as well as D.C. That's right. Income tax law applied to all U.S. territories and, and uh, D.C. back then. Not anymore, of course, since 1960. So, uh, look at the word trader business now. This is going to be interesting, okay? In 1938, the 75th Congress first defined the term trader business when used in Title 26, the Intro of New Code. Okay, as far as we can tell, that's the first time they defined the term trade or business in the Revenue Act of 1938. Okay, now, and they say definitions. When used in this title, folks, look at trader business, the performance of functions of a public office, right? There it is in D. Now, this definition unexpectedly only included the performance of functions of public office. No business of any kind is listed, only federal government workers, okay? <laughs> Doing the work of the government. This definition of the term for income tax purposes has remained unchanged, as I showed you, as found in section 7701A26, which you just saw, right? Now, this is interesting. A few months later, in their next session, Congress first defined trader business when using the code of District of Columbia for DC only income taxes, that's right. They passed the law only for Washington, DC. Now, not the territories, only DC. 
Now you go further down, okay? This was in July 26, 1939, when they did this DC law, okay? Here we go. They call this law the District of Columbia Revenue Act of 1939. Definitions. For the purposes of this title, right? Okay, the District of Columbia Revenue Act of 1939, okay? Look, let's go down to 12. There was trade or business, including the engaging in or carrying on any trade, business, profession, vocation, or calling, or commercial activity in the District of Columbia and include the performance of the function of a public office as a separate, <laughs> as a separate activity. This shows very clearly, folks, if they wanted, and they could, per the Constitution, tax the people, you know, uh, the, uh, in, the, in the 50 states, Okay, uh, the, the commercial business activities, they would have done so, but they never did. The authority to tax in the 50 states is only performance function office. And by the way, that's for people that work in D.C. But in D.C., they can tax any kind of business or commercial activity. They have that power in D.C., and they can do that. But for territories... Congress shows, nah, we're not going to tax every professional business in territories. In territories, you know, we only tax federal government workers. That's the choice Congress made because they can do that, okay? So this definition, in addition to performance of functions of a public office or doing work of government, includes what most people would expect a definition of the term trader business to include what any trade business profession vocation or calling or commercial activity and this definition has not changed significantly since first written by congress in 1939 currently the definition can be found in code of the district of columbia 47.1801.04 general definitions and here it is folks we got the picture of the law right here for you okay code of the district of columbia right chapter 18 income and franchise taxes okay for council for the district of columbia publishes it and here in general definitions for the purposes of this chapter Chapter 18, Income and Franchise Taxes, look at trade or business in 53, okay? Means the engaging in, in or carrying on of any trade, business, profession, vocation, or calling, or commercial activity in the District of Columbia, okay? Including activities in a district that benefit the related entity of a taxpayer, the performance of function of public office and leasing of real and per or personal property in the District of Columbia by any person, whether or not property is leased directly by a person or through an agent, officer, or representative, and whether or not the person, agent, officer, or representative performs any services in connection with the property. Wow. Look at that nice detailed specifically <laughs> and they can tax they want to tax the hell out of it in dc because they're gonna do what they want in dc okay so this again shows you proof that when you see trader business in the federal income tax laws in title 26 it does not include <laughs> anything except federal government workers and contractors. Same goals with the United States means only Washington, D.C. Right? So we know now, based upon all this, that clearly the income tax laws only apply to D.C. citizens and residents, folks. What they did with you, folks, they deceived you. Okay? Here, they 
<clears throat> we have here the um, definition of term United States. The U.S. individual income tax return is not a 50 states income tax. It's a D.C. income tax. That form should be called the D.C. individual income tax return, but they don't do that. They call it United States individual income tax return, and they don't tell you, oh, by the way, United States is not the 50 states. It's actually the District of Columbia only. You should read it. We told you in the law books. Ignorance of the law is no excuse, they say. So, folks, what you want to do is go to our website, freedomlawschool.org, and take the seven steps to regain your power and freedom and never again voluntarily pay the Washington, D.C. swamp legally and safely guaranteed if that's what you want. I cannot make you free. Only you have the power and the choice to make you free. All I can do is take you to the water, but I cannot make you drink. I love everyone. I want you to be free. I want you to have a free life. And together with me and others, we work together to have America be a free country for ourselves, for our children, our grandchildren, folks. That's what it's all about. But to do that, folks, you got to be able to choose. When you go to and from work on a shopping errand, put our videos up in your car. As you look at the road, drive safely, listen to the videos. And then when you have lunch or dinner, put your smartphone up one more time. And then you can this time listen and read at the same time to verify the thing I'm telling you is not my opinion. Uh-uh. It's U.S. government's official legal websites, reports, and publications that we rely upon. So with that, folks, I give you my love. I give you the choice that God wants you to have the choice continue on your path to freedom. Never again be a slave of the deep state because they made you believe, oh, they're going to get to me if I don't file a income tax. That's all lies, 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 lies. In step two, three, and more, you see why they're not so strong. Why filing a 1040 form is the very thing that puts a rope around your neck and gives them the power. You got to stop filing those 1040 forms. You don't need to be afraid once you know the truth. Seek the truth, and the truth shall set you free at freedomlawschool.org.